Not far from the rising hotels and beach resorts is the old town of Nasaba, where tourists flock to shop among the many stalls selling souvenirs and antiques. The recent flood of tourists to the Black Sea, coupled with the demise of communism, has created opportunities for Bulgarians to start their own businesses. Um, if there are more people coming here now uh, than five years ago, are there also more people selling? Uh, have, have new people uh, started up businesses like yours here? Mm, yeah, but this has another reason, not exactly the tourists. Everybody who can start own business, he does it. Okay. So it doesn't depend from the tourists exactly. But there's more competition for you now yeah. than five years ago, yeah. is that right? How do you decide then, uh, because there are other people selling these as mm -hmm. well, so how do you decide how much to charge? If you charge too much, they go and buy for some, from somebody else. Uh, How do you, you know this is uh, the market? Market shows everything. So, do, do you go and look at what the other people are selling no, their goods for? No, clients they tell us this uh, is everything. We check how much we sell, and this is the way business goes. Okay. It's normal. Yes. In a perfectly competitive market, producers have no choice but to accept the price the market gives to them. But most companies don't operate in a perfectly competitive market. They've got some degree of monopoly power. They have some power to influence price. One example of this type of power can be seen in the diamond business, where one company controls a large share of the market. So I don't know very much about the diamond market, but my understanding is that uh, De Beers have uh, are, the, are the ones that sell most of the diamonds. They they yeah. have they're the kind of dominant players in the market. De Beers is the most important dominant player. Yeah. yeah. And De Beers set the price. They just say, "Well, take it or leave it. This is the yeah. price for these. Yeah. Up to you. It's up to you. Take it or leave it. Yeah. No negotiation. No negotiation at all. It's now at the moment the price is rising extremely. Uh, the big manufacturers are keeping the stones in the stock, so it's difficult to get diamonds. So there's many demand, so the, the price is ri rising, rising. So the way to push the prices up is to restrict the amount that's coming onto the market. Yeah, so, and, and, yes. that, and that's what's happening at the moment. Right. Using calculus, we can show how much higher are prices in monopolistic markets, yeah. such as the diamond trade, compared with prices in competitive markets. What we're trying to do is to find why supermarket markups vary so much between products. In order to do this, we'll need to work through a series of steps. And the first step is to focus on the way that firms with monopoly power raise price above the competitive level. We've already seen how prices are determined in competitive markets. We've also looked at the monopolist's relationship between price, average, and marginal, and total revenue. But now we introduce cost functions. Profit-maximizing behavior for a monopolistic firm in an industry will produce a lower level of output and a higher price than would be the case in a perfectly competitive market and we'll make this point by way of a simple example. Here we have a monopolist total revenue function given as TR total revenue equals 40Q minus 2Q squared. And we have a total cost function, TC, equaling 10 minus 8Q plus 2Q squared. Now, profit maximization for the monopolist requires MC to equal MR. So first, let's find MR, then we'll find MC. MR is DTR by DQ, which in our case is 40 minus 4Q. We can find marginal cost using the same principles. DTC by DQ is equal to minus 8 plus 4Q. 
Now since profit maximization requires that MR equals MC, we need that 40 minus 4Q equals minus 8 plus 4Q, which solves at Q equals 6. So the monopolist wants to produce 6 units. What price does he wish to charge? What's the highest price he can charge if he's making 6 units of output per time period? Well, TR equals 40Q minus 2Q squared. So average revenue, AR, is equal to 40Q minus 2Q squared divided by Q, which equals 40 minus 2Q. Notice as before, MR has twice the slope of AR. So if Q is 6, AR will be 28. The monopolist will wish to make 6 units of output at a price of 28. Now let's find the equilibrium if this industry were perfectly competitive. The marginal cost curve of the monopolist is the sum of the marginal cost curves, the supply curve of the perfectly competitive industry. In perfect competition, MC equals AR. So minus 8 plus 4Q equals 40 minus 2Q. Q equals 8. The competitive industry will produce 8 units of output per time period, whereas the monopolist will only produce 6 units of output. What's the price if the market is competitive? Price, the same as average revenue. Average revenue, when Q equals 8, is 40 minus 16, which gives us 24 a lower price. So where firms are perfectly competitive, they'll produce more output at a lower price than a monopolistic firm. Now this isn't enough to tell us why supermarket markups vary, but as we'll see, it's an important first step towards getting to the answer.